a little bit about me because I read on the BuzzFeed article that you have to be personal about these things and whatnot. So someone said I look like a disheveled Ed Sheeran, that someone had made Ed Sheeran out of clay and then held it at a wall or something. Um, my favorite drink is Lemsip Max. They do uh, honey and ginger flavored one, which is pretty cool. That's just out now. Um, I should really, have, there should be a sponsorship on opportunity here, please. Uh, if anyone knows anyone at Lems, uh, and yeah, if you're into beaches, you can pretty much just hammer the leave button now. Um, and there, here's me with some of my crew um, and uh, the star Vicky McClaw, who you might know from Line of Duty. I'm a, ter I'm a terrible, terrible name dropper. Yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Um, so yeah, basically, um, you wanting some ideas, kind of. ASAP kind of you know the mafia have come to town and they want your best five ideas for something um kind of broken it down into three steps which is kind of I'm a bit allergic to kind of corporate jargon so I've called it stuff like delve research which is research muse which is idea generation and realize which is to implement stuff and there's a few kind of um bits and bobs for um, a few, I guess, guiding principles for kind of research, which is to be curious and kind of playful, you know, to have uh, a bit of a beginner's mind. Uh, they've actually done some research where experts were so kind of honed in on their, their, their topic that they were, you know, really into that they completely discarded a lot of really relevant info uh, and just completely forgot about it. And kind of imagine yourself in other people's shoes, so that's obviously pretty relevant for the research bit. Um, it's just to kind of, you know, see your audience and yeah, just kind of be, um, yeah, be a bit mindful of, of other people and whatnot and see what kind of worlds they're living in. And also daydream is, is usually kind of not uh, encouraged in the office but I'd say it's you know it's where all good ideas come from is where you're you know you're between tasks or you're walking back the amount of ideas that I have when I'm walking back from the office or, or whatnot is, is crazy and also tolerate ambiguity you know so kind of see the most creative thinkers throughout history have always um, you know, uh, not gone for kind of black and white thinking. They've kind of seen the shades of grey in between, so they've kind of seen, and it's that kind of um, intricacy which means you can kind of see new uses for stuff and, and so on and so forth. So with that in mind, I've kind of used, taken our mince pie um, topic, because it's nice and festive, um, and kind of, uh, we use a few different tools here. So I'm just kind of going to spin you through uh, a bit of research, which we've done about mince pies. So it's about 22,000 22, odd people feeling pretty festive right now, which is nice. Uh, if you want to know what these tools are, by the way, just hit me up afterwards in the chat book, uh, box or just drop us a, a note. So now, you know, we've got our thinking cap on and we're looking at you know, what kind of words and, and what kind of uh, bits and bobs people that are talking about mince pies are into, you know, and where they hang out. So we've got kind of stuff which is um, where they live uh, in terms of the geography. You can set this to different um, countries and what words they use. So, you know, we might want to use associated words with um, in our content, whatever content we're making, it could be an article, it could be a video, whatnot. Um, so yeah, we can use some of those words. And even bizarrely, we've got like a little bit of a, I didn't think, yeah, apparently everything's being politicized these days because we've got the uh, political sharing for how mince pie people are. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and we've got, um, where they all our audience hang out so that is potentially good for kind of partnerships or whatnot so we could you know potentially uh, approach i didn't know chris moore's people like mince pies that much that's crazy but um you know people for kind of partnerships and so on and so forth and then i've got some i haven't got you know time to kind of go through any of this in detail um, but we've got you know social media networks where they hang out um and 
yeah, some more bits and bobs in terms of sentiment and the best time and day to post. Um, it's all wicked cool. Um, so we've got, we've gathered a, a huge amount of uh, info uh, and I'd say write notes on all of that stuff. Um, and so then we want, we want to make fresh content. So here's um, a few ways to do that. So we've kind of embedded ourselves within our subject. And I think the first two are really about kind of clearing the table, as it were, and getting your mind into a kind of um, a clearer space um, so you can kind of uh, start thinking of some ideas. So I always kick off any kind of idea generation session with a list of things that you can do with a brick, you know, and they can be as bizarre, as surreal as you want. Um, uh, you know, the, just the better, um, the more the better. Um, and that just helps you kind of start that whole kind of free association thing. Another thing is to clear your mind and, you know, you can, there's a lot of different things you've probably heard of, you know, mindfulness meditation. One of the best techniques that I've ever done, which is literally, it takes about 30 seconds to do, is uh, you don't, you can do it with your eyes, do, eyes closed, eyes open, but you just say to yourself in your head, you say, what will be my next thought? You know, what's my next thought going to be? And I pretty much guarantee, you know, I've got quite a busy mind, you know, there's a lot going on, I run a small business and, you know, there's a lot to deal with. If you just ask yourself, what will be my next thought? You can even do it now. You will just have a space and then you'll start to kind of have a little bit more clarity towards things. Um, there's another thing called image streaming, which is a crazy odd thing. So with all of these, uh, the next two as well, we're looking at getting um, random input. So we're wanting stuff from the outside world that's going to come in and help us um, come up with this, with this new idea. So image streaming is deceptively th simple. What you do is you close your eyes and if you see kind of behind your eyelids, you have kind of um, a mass of, you know, dancing kind of colours and, and shapes and, and whatnot. And you're basically just um, concentrating on basically the backs of your eyelids. So you're seeing what kind of stuff emerges there. And then you're narrating what you see into, you know, a tape recorder or a, a voice memo app on your phone. That's a crazy one. I highly recommend it. And once you've kind of been enveloped into all this info that you've done under research, you can really you can get some some excellent stuff. Another one's free writing, which I recommend, you know, doing for about 10 minutes. You can do that pen and paper or you can do that on the keyboard. Um, and yes, set a stopwatch. And if you run out of stuff and you're basically just writing whatever is going on in your head as fast as you can, if nothing is coming into your head, just repeat the same word um, that you have just been thinking again and again until something new comes. I'll show you an example of that in just a mo. Another one is free drawing, which is pretty much the same, but just obviously drawing. Another one, closed loop listening, which is you put your fingers in your ear, don't do it in the office, it'll look like pretty bizarre, but you kind of hear it sounds like it sounds crackers, but you hear kind of like the sound within your own body. And it kind of, again, like it will just give you a bit of space and a bit of clarity to, you know, for this idea, you know, to kind of just drop into your head. Because that's what we're really looking for with all of this. Another one, this was beloved of Disney, Walt Disney, which was uh, to wear different hats. This could be either be metaphorical or literal. So um, once you've got this idea, you can put on your practical hat and be like, how does this work practically? Or you could put on your um, really pessimistic hat and be like, well, what, what happens if this all goes wrong? You know, what if we flop at this? Um, and, you know, you can put on your dreamer hat and this, all of his early films and the whole Disney uh, studios was made through this, the same, you know, different people in different meetings wearing different hats and putting an extreme standpoint and 
once you can get an idea through these extreme standpoints, you, you've got something really interesting going on a lot of the time. And there's a lot more besides, you know, obviously we're pretty limited on time. So, uh, yeah. Um, and there's a few, um, here's a few resources. Uh, oops, skipped by that. Um, which again, just help with uh, kind of free association stuff. Um, so, I mean, I just, whenever I'm bang out of ideas, I hit, there's this link to, it just sh shows up a random Wikipedia page. So you can um, just fire that up. And then the trick is from this random Wikipedia page is to relate whatever that might be. It could be a composer from the mid 15th century to relate it back to whatever the thing is you're looking to find ideas out about. And then we've got realizing, um, which is the whole definition of creativity is something which is novel and serves a purpose. So, you know, you can, I could think of a hundred crazy ideas right now, but if none of them actually work in the real world, it's kind of a bit redundant. So what you want to do is select all this ideas and all this research is select the best parts and combine that stuff together um and review it by peers by users by customers uh, etc and there's you know there's a lot of trial and error in this stage um and you can revisit the research and the idea generation phases as necessary um and this is a terrifying look into my psyche but this is basically i've done about five minutes of just free writing um about mince pies so there's a lot of, I mean, this is absolutely bananas. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I've gone back through, and this would be part of the realization bit, is I've kind of, and, you know, I'm not saying any of these ideas are like, you know, game changers or anything like that. But I'm saying, all I'm saying is there are ideas that I might not have come up with had I not done this exercise. And combined with all the other um, exercises we've talked about, they could be pretty cool. So like, you know, I've got the first thing I thought of was surprise. So you've got kind of like different flavors of mince pies, like, you know, Revel sweets, uh, which are pretty cool. And then don't wince at the mints, which could be like a, a free from range of mince pies. Um, yeah. And then like mince pies in disguise, which is mince pies shapes as other stuff. Like again, you know, like if Marks and Spencer's on the call, I want 10%, I want 10%.